Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at some series parallel circuits in the AC case. So let's start off with something fairly straightforward. I'm going to put an AC source over here and an inductor coming down and then in parallel with it, a combination of a resistor and a capacitor. So the source we will set up to be 10 volts peak at 5 kilohertz. And the inductor value will be 10 millihenries. Resistor will make 250 ohms. And the capacitor 200 nanofarads. Beautiful. And what we would like to do here is find the current and the voltage for each component. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so we have to apply our series rules and our parallel rules on sub circuits. So what we see here effectively is the inductor in parallel with the series combination of the resistor and capacitor. So basically it's a parallel circuit. So we're going to use the parallel rule that the voltage is the same across all elements in a parallel circuit. So if this is 10 volts on the source, there must be 10 volts across the inductor and there must be 10 volts across the resistor capacitor series pair. And as the series pair, what is constant there is the current. So the current through the resistor must be the same as the current through the capacitor. And by KVL, those two voltages must add up to the applied potential, in other words, the 10 volt source. So let's take a look at the inductor first. That's fairly straightforward. We can find X of L, all right? That's just equal to J two pi FL. So we'll plug our numbers in here. All right, so the frequency is 5K. And the inductor is 10 millihenries. So when we grind that through, we wind up with J314 ohms, or 314 at an angle of 90, if you prefer. Okay, knowing that we know the voltage, we could immediately find the current through the inductor. All right, so IL, just basically using Ohm's law, would have to be the applied potential E divided by X sub L. So that's 10 at an angle of zero divided by XL, which is 314 at an angle of 90 degrees. And IL is going to work out to 31.8 mils at an angle of minus 90 degrees. All right, remember, Current can't change instantaneously in the inductor, so it's going to be lagging the voltage. Right now, turning our attention to this part, we would say, okay, you know, what do we what do we have um, for X sub C? So X sub C is a negative J one over two pi F C. So we'll just plug our values into here. All right, we've got our five K hertz and 200 nanofarads. And that's going to work out to 159 ohms minus J, 159 at an angle of minus 90, if you prefer. Now we can't find the current immediately because, you know, 10 volts doesn't drop across just the cap, it drops across that pair. So we need to find out what that series resistance works out to be. So I'll just call that Z series for lack of a better name. And that's just going to be R in series with X sub C, in other words, 250 minus J159 in rectangular form. Um, we could also write that in polar form. We're going to need it to do the, the uh, calculation for current in a moment. 
So we can also write that as uh, 296 at an angle of negative 32.5. All right. Now we do expect this angle to be closer to zero than closer to uh, minus 90 because the resistor is obviously the bigger piece on that. Okay, so the resistor dominates in that combo. All right, now knowing that, in the series case, current remains constant, so we can say that current through the resistor has to be the same as the current through the capacitor, which is the series current, All right? The series sub circuit. So we can again use Ohm's law V over the Z, All right? So that's E over. Z series. So that's 10 at an angle of 0 divided by 296 at an angle of minus 32.5 degrees. And that will work out to 33.8 mils. At an angle of 32.5 degrees. Okay, so far so good. Now, this current plus this current, excuse me, this current plus this current should add up to our source current, right? The current coming out of here. I total or I source, whatever you want to call it. So how do I find that? I mean, we could just add them and just sort of say, well, that's, you know, KCL. Sure. But Let's find Z total, right? Because then we can um, just use Ohm's law on that. So that's, that's a useful thing to do. So Z total, in other words, what the source sees, would be the parallel combination of XL and Z series. Okay, so Z total... is the uh, J314 or 314 at 90 um, in parallel with the 296 sitting at negative 32.5 okay all right that turns out to be now you could just do product sum rule on that if you wanted to but that turns out to be 316 at an angle of 25.7 degrees. So the circuit is inductive. And if you break this apart, if you say, you know, what is this in rectangular form? This is equivalent to 285 plus J137. And you could, knowing the frequency, you could go back and figure out what a J137 turns out to be. It turns out to be um, uh, just about 4.4. It's actually 4.36 millihenries. So at this particular frequency, this three-element series parallel network is basically equivalent to a 285-ohm resistor that's in series with a uh, 4.36 millihenry coil. Okay? You change the frequency and that alters, right? Because as you change the frequency, these values both change. You know, the circuit be could become more inductive or less inductive, all depending on, you know, where we're going in frequency and, the, you know, the precise values of things. So that really only works at this one frequency. Nonetheless, knowing that value, we can find IT, right? I total, I source, whatever you want to call it. I know the voltage, 10 at an angle of zero. I know the impedance, 316 at 25.7. So I can just divide those out. And the I source works out to 31.6 mils at an angle of minus 25.7 degrees, All right? So again, this plus this should give us this, All right? That's what KCL is telling us, okay? K 
KCL says IL plus I series has to equal I source. So let's do a little phaser diagram for that. Yay! Everyone is excited about the phaser diagram. So here we go. Uh, let's see, what do we have for a magnitude? So, okay, let's put this up here a little bit. All right, so here's our reel. Okay, I'm going to swap some colors around here so we can see what's going on. So our total, 31.6, that's at negative 25. That's going to be coming out here somewhere. The uh, inductor is at minus 90 at 30-something. And then we've got this 30-something up here at 32, 32 degrees. Okay. So uh, they're actually, the magnitudes on them are all fairly similar. Um, so 33.8 at uh, 32.5 degrees, 33.8, I'm just going to say it's like here. Okay, so this is, uh, this is your I series. 33.8 at 32.5 degrees. Okay, and then um, let's see for the inductor. I think I'll do that in green so it stands off of the axis here. So that's 31.8. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be around that big. Coming straight down. Now, if we did our little head to tail thing here, like if I took this and moved it down here, okay, then this point here should be our I source. All right, this should be I source. Let's see if that makes sense. Well, that's supposed to be 31.6 mils. And, you know, that magnitude looks about right, okay? You know, the, all of these are, you know, low 30s. And then the angle here should be minus 25.7. And that looks pretty good, you know, considering that we're just sort of sketching this, right? Um, that's what it looks like. Now, important thing to notice, you do not have a 90-degree angle here. You know, on many of the phasers we've done in the past, we see 90-degree angles between various pieces. It's not the case here because you've got the inductor versus a complex impedance. So, you know, what is this complex impedance? You know, it depends on what's out here. I mean, it could just be a resistor. It could be what we have here, RC. It could be RL. It could be RLC. So the angle, the Z angle of this thing, it could be anywhere from plus 90 to minus 90. So, you know, compared to this thing at minus 90, yeah, this result could be, you know, out here somewhere. Who knows? It right? all depends on the precise values. So we don't see that in this case. We don't see a nice 90-degree angle. Now, we're not done here, right? Because you know, we wanted to find the currents. Well, we did find all the currents, but we also have to find the voltages. Well, we know the voltage across the inductor, but what about the resistor and the cap? Okay. Well, we have some options here. Um, we do know there's 10 volts across the whole thing, and we do know the current that flows through both of them. So we could use, in the former case, the voltage divider rule. In the latter case, we could use Ohm's law. And just, you know, just because I'm a crazy kind of guy here, we're going to do both. So let's do voltage divider rule. We'll use that to find uh, the voltage cross resistor. Okay, so you take your source, right, E, times the thing you're interested in, which is going to be R, divided by the total, which is Z series. All right, so that's E times R over Z series. All right, so E is 10 at an angle of zero. R is just 250 or 250 at zero if you prefer. And then the Z series we know is uh, 296 at minus 32 and a half. So when we grind that out, we get 8.45 at 
right? Zero minus the minus 32 and a half. Um, we could use Ohm's law. Obey Ohm, it's the law to find VC. All right, so VC will just be the series current times XC. All right. So the I series, um, we know that's 33.8 mils. And the X sub C we found to be 159 at an angle of minus 90. So grinding that out, right, your VC is going to be 5.38 at an angle of minus 57.5 degrees. Right? Remember, voltage cross cap can't change instantaneously, so it's going to lag the current. Right? Negative sign over there. So KVL is going to tell us that the source voltage should split between VR and VC. All right, so if I add this and this, we should get E, which is 10 at an angle of zero. Okay, well, guess what? Time to do another phasor diagram. The exciting world of phasor diagrams. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, well, we have the 10 at zero. So let's draw that here. All right, that's E. Then we have our two pieces. Um, I guess I'll just use green. What the heck? Uh, what do we have for VR? Well, that's uh, 8.45 at 32 and a half. Okay, so 32 and a half, you know, 45 is like this, so 32 and a half is out here somewhere. It's going to be about that long. So, you know, something, <laughs> something like that. Not the best drawing in the world. All right, so that's our VR. And then we have... Our VC, okay, so that's 5.38, so if that's 10, that's 5, so it's going to be, you know, about that long. And it's sitting down here at negative 57, so here's 45. So 57 is going to be a little bit steeper than that. You know, maybe something, what do you think, around there? You know, something like that. Um, so that's VC. And once again, if we sort of pick this up and translate it over, oops, that was not done very well. Uh, it sh <laughs> sorry, it should, if I, if I could like draw correctly, I should get a, uh, like a ruler here or something, but this should work out, okay? My drawings are less than ideal. So we'll do a simulation on this coming up. Um, on a similar circuit, so that you can see that it does work out. Sometimes doing these uh, freehand on plain white paper without graph grids is maybe not the most perfect thing. Um, in this case, I should point out, you do get a nice 90 degree angle there, right? Because after all, the series combo, you know, it has just one resistor and one capacitor. So you are going to see 90 de degrees between those two things. All right? Okay. Now we could have something a little more complicated. You know, we could have something like, you know, this. Okay. In which case we now have a complex impedance here, you know, an angle somewhere between, depending on the values, you know, somewhere between a zero and a minus 90. So in a case like that, this voltage and this voltage would not necessarily have a 90 degree angle on it. Okay. All right, I think that covers pretty good. So what we'll do now is uh, we'll get rid of the bad accent and go to a simulation, right?